Hello, Catherine here. I'm back, 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 back again, again, again. Doing another video, and this video is going to be about one of my favorite stories. It's a love story. It's a very twisted love story about a man and a woman, about secrets and scandal and angry uncles and castration, really all you can want for in a love story. So let's set the scene first. It's 12th century France. And it's a time and a place where the church is still very much in power. It controls a lot of different aspects of a person's everyday life, including education, philosophy. And that's where we meet Abelard. Abelard was, in all accounts, a brilliant debater, philosopher, intellectual. He was also incredibly cocky. A lot of his peers didn't really like him very much. They thought that he was arrogant, but students loved him. He had literally a mob, some groupies, if you will, of people who just wanted to hear him talk, wanted to learn from him. Real, real uh, cool teacher vibes going on with, with Mr. Abelard. And at some point, we're, we're thinking that he was probably in his late, mid to late 30s at this point, he discovers this woman named Eloise. And we don't know a lot about her because she's not nearly as popular, not nearly as well known as Abelard was. But we do know that she was also brilliant. I mean, Abelard said that she was one of the, if not the most brightest women in, in Paris at the time. And again, pretty cocky guy. And he thought very few women were up to, up to par to get with him. But Eloise definitely was. <clears throat> now, Eloise was living at that time with her uncle and people are not quite sure how old she was. There's debates on whether she was 17 or in her early 20s. Either way, she was younger than Abelard was at the time, but that didn't stop him. He somehow convic convinced her uncle to let him live with Eloise and them in, in his house. And the uncle somehow said, fine, that's, that's cool. And Abelard said, okay, well, I'll tutor your niece for you just as a little offering of rent. I don't, I don't really know quite about what happened there, but he started tutoring her and the tutoring sessions quickly turned into some extracurricular activities mixed in with them and they fell in love they had this torrid love affair and it was going great in until her uncle found out and put a kibosh on it. Well, he thought he did, but they continued to meet. They continued to send letters to one another, real, real sexy letters. And especially when you think about like 12th century Europe, <laughs> pretty, pretty vulgar, but they continue to meet. And at one point she gets pregnant and both of them are like, shoot, <laughs> what are we gonna do now? Like, we're not supposed to be together. Abelard, for one, was big in, again, in philosophy, in theology, too. He was pretty well known with the church, and Eloise knew that if they got, if people found out that he impregnated her out of wedlock, that it would ruin his career. But he, he wanted to marry her. He said, you know, this is the right thing to do. Your uncle's gonna be super mad if if I don't marry you. But she, again, was like, no, this is going to ruin your career. And plus, from her writing, it seems like Eloise just didn't really think much of marriage. She was just like, I want love. I don't necessarily want marriage. And so that was her opinion. But ultimately, he, Abelard decides to send her away to his family, actually, and, and outside of Paris. <clears throat> send you away. Hey, you, you live with them. This is safe from your uncle. His uncle, or her uncle, eventually finds out that 
she is pregnant and says, hey, you guys need to get married. And so Abelard arranges this marriage in Paris and they get married, secret marriage, but her uncle is really just a terrible man, decides to spread this around, say, hey, they're married because she's pregnant, blah, blah, blah. And again, this hurts Abelard's career. And not only does the uncle hurt his career, he also hires this band of, of men to creep into Abelard's home and castrate him in the middle of the night. Obviously, I mean, it was like a castration, like a like an animal castration. I don't know the different kinds of castration, but it was it was from every description I've heard, very very terrible, very rough for for Abelard, and I would presume the men who were, were castrating him. So this obviously took a pretty big toll on Abelard, and he tells Eloise, "Hey, you need to. We need to separate. This is this is not going to end well for either of us." And so he sends her off to a covenant and she, he tells her, hey, you need, a, you need to become a nun. You know, you need, this is what you need to do. And he goes to become a monk and they live out their lives separate for about 12 years. And in that 12 years, he really focuses a lot again on his studies. And he writes this collection, this essentially a history of his life and Eloise eventually finds it and starts writing to him and they correspond back and forth there's seven letters between them that they found and toward the end Abelard is kind of cool uh not really all lovey-dovey as he used to be where Eloise is still very much in love and their story ultimately ends he dies and she supposedly gets his his remains and they are buried together so that's that's the end but it was the whole story is very tragic but it also is poetic in that these two people who were not supposed to be together ended up somehow maintaining a connection for the rest of their lives I mean via letters but they remain connected as if like the world couldn't keep them apart <clears throat> so but then again he also got castrated and she had to become a nun and she didn't really want to become a nun so it, it, none of it really worked out for the best for either of them so maybe this is more of a warning than a love story either way it's one of my favorites <laughs> and i don't know if you if you have heard of this story please let me know if you have any sort of moral of the story that you you think I should know about let me know I'm interested to see what you to hear what you think about this story so again that is a tale of Eloise and Abelard <laughs>